Welcome back, everybody. This is Backcountry Amateur Radio, where I usually talk about using radios in the backcountry. But today, I'm going to talk about repairing one of my tools. My boot has a BOA system that uh, is starting to fray. But these boots are, in the winter, most used, and that's how I get into the backcountry. So I got into BOA's website, boafit.com, and went through the process of getting the equipment that I needed to repair my boots, and they sent it to me for free as part of the warranty that is put together by Scarpa. So included is that tiny little screwdriver, and you need that. Um, that's how you remove the bow itself. And don't worry, they usually send a two pack, two packs, one for each boot, so you get two screwdrivers in case you misplace or lose this tiny screwdriver. So I started by removing the, the BOA ratchet itself, the knob, and that's where the tiny screwdriver is really necessary. Now with this boot, what I could have done initially to save myself some time, as you'll see in a minute, is to remove the tongue or the orange plate of this boot by using a three millimeter Allen key for the three bolts along um, the inside of that boot or the arch side of the boot, which is my left hand. But as you can see, I used a wire snip to cut the cable and pulled out the, the secondary ratchet mechanism, the, the spool. And then you have to use a clip again, especially in my case where it's frayed and uh, it just made it a whole lot easier in order to pull the cable out. Now, again, I should have removed the tongue initially and would have made it even easier to remove this cable. Now the cable's got a crimp on the end, which allows it to be anchored into the boot. Um, now you'll see, I was able to get this out and you can barely see that little crimp at the end of that cable. Let's get my fat fingers out of the way here. I ended up pulling it out with the, the wire snip and then where the fray started again, I had to clip on the outside, but then I was able to pull it cleanly through. And now the boot is actually ready for the new BOA. So you start with the cable and you'll see that I made the mistake of running it uh, poorly and missed one of the uh, inserts or one of the, the retainers for the cable ex on the external. And that's the little black one that is on the tongue. So after you get this unwound, you actually feel how nice this cable is. Uh, at that point, I decided it's time to remove the tongue. This was going to be too much of a process to try to feed this cable through. Uh, by live prying the tongue open with one hand, and not stabilizing the boot with the other. Now, if I had a boot vise, which I guess I could have, it would have been a little bit different story. But I decided to pull the tongue and uh, made it so much easier. So you can see, feed that through, and then it anchors into place, and that part is done. The next step would normally have been to feed it through that little eyelet, that, uh, that, that guide. Instead, I, I bypassed that on more or less on accident from not paying attention. And it's time to feed it through the new spool. So keep the, new, the old spool on hand so you can reference the routing because each side of the spool has opposing directions for the cable, what, depending on whether it's a right or a left boot. So as you pass this through the first, the first eyelet on the spool, it goes through a second one and then it double, double backs a third time. Um, or I guess the second time. And I tried to show you this, but it's so tiny. And that's why I referenced the directions. And the, the directions show you that it kind of double backs again. And it's it can be a little tricky to anchor that into place and then to hold it while you pull the excess back towards the main piece of the cable or the external part of the cable. But you can see right there, it's seated and you can actually see in the shadow that that cable is fully seated, at least the head of it. And then you just draw that back, give it a nice yank. And this is actually ready to put back into the spooler. So it's actually really easy. I think all told the process next time would only take me about five minutes because now I know it, but I wanted to show you so you had a reference. So here, I'm anchoring it back into place. Make sure it's proper side up. You want those ratchets, those, those top splines to be facing up. Now it's actually time to 
replace the knob. Now they send a new knob, so I would use that. New screw, everything goes into place nice and easy. And um, once I'm done getting into place, I push it down and test it. I want to make sure that it is pulling the cable the way it's supposed to and it pops up the way it's supposed to to release. And it does that. It does that just fine. It's great to have this working again and to have it happen so quickly and be able to do this at home. Next step is to put the tongue back on. Now, it might not be a bad idea to put uh, a little layer of some kind of uh, waterproofing agent between the tongue and the shell of the boot again. But uh, it didn't have anything before, but I could actually see how it was just a thin layer of caulk might even help with some of the waterproofing on that side of the boot. But my feet are always wet anyway, just from sweating, so who knows. But here I have taken the boot back apart, or the boa back apart, to restring the lacing system. Now, the ones on the shell, the retainers, are actually clips, and you just pull them into place. But that one, that one actually has an eyelet that the cable has to pass through. So here's the instructions for the spool, and I've included a link for the instructions, but there's also uh, an instruction booklet in the packets uh, with the, uh, the new parts. So refer to that. Um, but it is pretty straightforward, and it is pretty easy to get this right. Just make sure you uh, make, get the cable through that eyelet and don't cause yourself the extra grief like I did. What was interesting about this is probably not so much the ease of the operation, but so much that I could actually do this in the field. So the spare kit they sent me is for the left boot, and that will actually go into my field repair kit. On that, on that note, you know, having just this little screwdriver, this little tool that, for this BOA system, means that I could potentially do a field repair even without a fresh cable. Um, if you carry a Leatherman, usually there's um, pliers or needle nose on there that has a little wire cutter. So you can see how you could possibly do a field repair if absolutely necessary without spare parts, but just by having that screwdriver. Anyway, thank you for stopping by. Thanks for checking this out. Hope it was helpful and uh, hope you keep skiing in those F1 boots. Take care and we'll see you down the trail.